Hi there, so in today's session we are going to be working on the architecture um, in this case, this mushroom building that we have right here. Um, in the last session we focused on the trees in the background and creating this fence um, and so we're also going to be introducing you to the pen tool to create vector artwork. Okay, so we've looked at photo manipulation we looked at using the brushes with some basic painting techniques and now we're going to look at vectors. So, uh, the first thing, I want, first thing I want you to do is you, you use your references, use those mood boards, those images that you've collected and find one that you feel suitable to use. So, I found this one on um, Google so I'm going to use um, a couple of elements of these so this mushroom here and um, I think it was this one on the end. Okay. Um, and we're going to put those two together to construct a sort of house um, in the bottom of our sort of forest okay as you can see here so um, to, before we begin we need to um, get the image into the um, file that we're working on so if we turn on our da -da -da, so if we go in open up your image in Photoshop double click background just to unlock it um, control and push, click the left mouse click or tap the um, image with a, a pen if you have one and push control C to copy and control V um, to sort of bring it in okay so let's take a look at this so these are actually a little bit smaller than what we want to be working with okay so we're going to make the image a little bit bigger so probably to about there I think okay so first one we're going to do is work on this so ideally what we need to do is break this down into three parts Oops. so firstly um, oh, there is um, the base okay which is going to be the furthest one underneath this big sort of stem okay um, in addition to that we're going to copy then the big round sort of top okay um, this, and the, the main sort of bulk body of the um, mushroom um, and then we're going to do a final layer of copying these little um, bubbly bits as to create a sort of a textured um, effect to our surface that will look um, a little more interesting. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new folder and we're going to put it between the fence and the trees. Okay, um, on my original one I have this, yep, between all we'll the walls rather than fence, um, the architecture ones in there. Okay, so we're just going to close this one off as well, as we don't need that. And there we go. So, we're going to call this one um, Architecture. And within that, we're going to create a new folder inside there. We're going to call this Mushroom 1. And we're going to create another layer, not folder, but another layer. And we're going to call this one um, Mushroom bottom so every it's just going to be the sort of bottom um, part of the body so you're going to set the pen tool now the pen tool has um, several um, buttons um, the sort of ones that we want to keep use is going to be the main pen tool um, which we sort of used with the um, terrains where we've got these two little pegs which we can then use to sort of create these really nice looking curves okay um, in addition to that we also have um, the freeform pen tool which is basically just like drawing on um, the difficulty with this is um, getting it to be accurate as you can see here very easy to go off course um, but you know these might make drawing around these a little bit quicker okay so we'll probably use that later on so um, in addition to that um, we have the add anchor point delete anchor point which allows us to um, add one, add more or delete them to curves that have already been made so if I want to think I need to add another one in I can just grab the pencil and I can just fit another one in here maybe fit um, another one in around here um, equally if I add one in the wrong place I can then go you know what let's take that out I didn't quite like them okay um, until we end up with <laughs> almost nothing okay um, and again we also have this convert pen tool which basically allows us to 
realign these pegs either together as a whole object or individually okay uh, really good to sort of perfecting those curves once we've placed them down so um, that's the basic tool set that we're going to use um, so it's going to delete those so we're going to start with the main body of this um, mushroom so I want you to select the pen tool and we're going to start just nice and cleanly at the bottom somewhere around here and sort of put all that out um, it doesn't really matter too much if that's accurate um, so at this stage we're just going to feed this up um, and what we're going to do um, is pretend we can visualize the middle of this we don't want to go all the way around the edge because it might create complications later on with regard to fitting um, another layer over it so we're literally just going to sort of soak this up and we want it to go a little bit um, rounder from the outside um, just so it fits in quite nicely like that so once we get the top on it it will look natural like it f it's supposed to be going through there and we're just going to ignore these details on the bottom um, as we don't really need those to get what we're, what we're aiming for so okay so once we've made our path we can go down to the bottom here and click on the paths um, tool and we want to save this path if we used to start working on another path now and um, that will get deleted so we want to call this mushroom oh, I'll put mush. I'm working in the dark probably not the most ideal thing to do mushroom one bottom okay you might want to call it something like M1 bottom just for convenience so what we're going to do now um, is the speed and for speed sorry um, what we're going to do now is click make selection and this is going to turn this mushroom, um, this shape, into um, an actual selection. Okay. So um, what we want to do is make sure we have our anti-alias selected. Otherwise, we're going to end up with this really thick block colour, um, which isn't going to work with the rest of the image where things have been feathered in. So what we're going to do is colour this selection in white. So we're going to go back to our original layer. That we made that seems to have gone missing and um, we'll just call this mushroom one must have been when i was um, doing control z and we're just going to go edit and we're going to fill that in with um, the fill tool and we're going to do this it was in white okay so obviously this image needs to be pulled down just so we can see what we're working on and there we have it. So now we have this really cool sort of looking um, image. So I noticed some people um, have also been using sort of magnetic and polygonal lasso tool. Um, you know, that they're okay, but um, you don't get the level of control um, that you do with the pen tool. Okay. Um, so for this next part, we're going to draw the top of the mushroom. So we're just going to bring that above. We're going to create a new layer. And we're just going to add bottom one seems that original one that we did and then we're gonna call this M1 and we're gonna call this top also allows us to keep us to be able to see what we're working on if we do it that way um, and obviously the folder says mushroom one so we know later on what that will be so let's get our pen tool um, we're gonna start going around so what we need to do is just bring this tool up here now this one we want to spend a little bit more time sort of getting it accurate you know we want a nice looking um, image and it doesn't matter if it's not exactly how it is underneath remember we're just using this as support we are not trying to create an, an absolutely accurate 100% finish but we do want to keep um, that level of control and I'm quite happy with that one and I think these this curve is quite nice uh, but I think we may need to bring this bit out slightly so if we go to our revert tool and as you can see here we want to just sort of bring this curve in we want a really nice clean <coughs> swerve round but we don't want to deviate too much because we are going to draw these areas as well and obviously you can feel free to add in any of us or things that you want I will leave a link on the Moodle page as well to access this image online um, so once we've done that again and we're sort of happy with it we can go yeah okay we'll go back to our paths and we'll double select, click the layer and then we'll call this one um, m1 top now i like to um keep these um these paths in order as well um so i'm going to take this above this one here 
and we're just gonna call, go back with this and call that in one okay so they all sort of follow a chron chron chronological order um, so we're going to turn this path into a selection as well sorry so if we go back and click make selection click OK um, so the other thing is as well we could fill the path directly um, but the one thing that we want to do is check that selection first and make sure we're happy with it which is why I do it this way um, rather than just going straight ahead because um, you know just get to quickly check that um, and we're going to go fill and then we're going to select um, a colour red similar to that in the background so let's zoom out and we sort of want to select something from up here click OK and then we're going to go OK oh, OK and if we zoom in oh, and then we're just going to quickly hide this and here you can see if we're starting to get this mushroom um, it's starting to appear Okay, so um, control D again. What we're going to do now is add these smaller bits. So this time we're just going to get the freeform pen tool. I'm going to just get a, bit, a little bit closer, and this time we're going to draw around. Okay, and we can do all of these in one go. Now you see here we end up with this really, really shaky line. Okay, um, but it does fix it out for us. So um, hopefully we will see what the results are like now it doesn't really matter too much at this stage um, if it isn't perfect but I'm seeing a lot of straight lines and not enough curves so we are going to go back and we're going to use um, the pen tool as before um, and obviously we can just draw around each of these in one and obviously start to build up um, that selection so I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible and um, it can be a bit time consuming just getting through them all um, so you might want to just leave a couple out I'm not particularly fussed with all this um, detail at the bottom um, we can just leave that sort of there and you know we just want to get a couple of these in so it really does make a massive difference um, in terms of the quality of and the, you know that level of detail and I think that's one of the areas that, um, that gets missed out a lot on um, when we're starting out in creating and designing and drawing um, you know that level of detail that we go to and um, you know a lot of that is about you know comes with experience comes with practice comes with um, being able to you know take a deeper look at the objects that we're creating um, you know in 3d modeling some of the best sculptors you know really go down to that that you know surface level um, detail you know even where all the little creases are in the skin with the details of that and um, you know it's what makes them it's what separates them from um, you know amateurs so um, I really do suggest that you know you really sort of bide your time and really sort of you know get fam familiarize yourself with the content um, and the details of, the f of your reference images um, I'm hoping to see some interesting um, adaptations um, which I know we're all capable of I've seen you know even going around in the classes I've seen some great um, pieces coming along um, which is good um, especially by those of you that have been working with the tutorial and actually paying attention and doing the same processes I've noticed some people have been um, sort of just sort of skipping through um, some of the bits or not really actually listening to the dialogue and so and mimicking but not actually getting the complete um, experience or information and obviously that's impacting um, the, the, the level of their work and the detail of the work and so well done um, and thanks to those of you that have listened and um, taken on board the things that are there in the sessions which should hopefully mean by next year we'll have a really sort of strong year two and Let's just bring this up. We can close that one off. So we're almost there now. Um, as I said, it's a bit time-consuming um, for the second mushroom that we're going to use for the um, for to create this sort of house with. Um, I have basically kept um, the uh, I've copied over. Sorry, the other what from the original one that I was working on, um, just to save us that little bit of time. So, I think we're almost there now. So, 
think one or two more um, and I think that'll do it so we have our selections as you can see here we're going to save them again we're going to call this M1 and we'll call this blobs because that's what they are I haven't had the time to actually look and find out what those blemishes those spots little things are and we're going to create obviously um, another selection and click OK we go back to our layers, we're going to create a new one, we're going to call this M1 blob again and we're going back to those problems as in the previous tutorial so M1 and we're going to call this blob ok so we're going to go edit and we're going to fill this in this time we're going to use that yellow from the spectrum of our um, ana analogous colours ok I'll split analogous colours and we're going to click ok and then uh, hopefully we will end up being left with an impression of a mushroom. Okay, so what we're going to do is just bring this, um, bring all these three down. Okay, so obviously we need, need to be above, we may need to move the leaves layer um, later on. Um, so we're just gonna. Right, so the other thing is that we need to do is actually make this look look make this look a little bit more 3D, a little bit more realistic and we're going to mimic the light and shadow effects Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is sort of treat these individual parts as, as, as separate objects so um, anything from the top um, we need to sort of get a shadow on the back light on this side so what we're going to do for the shadow obviously um, select black create a new layer and we're going to call this top shadow and we're going to select the gradient tool okay and we're literally just going to bring this in about there and create that shadow now that's a little bit strong so um, we're going to take it down to about 40 percent just keep give it a real sort of subtle effect and we're going to add the shadow for the other parts as well so we're going to click the button and we'll call this button shadow okay and we're going to now select the bottom and we're going to do the same thing we're just going to bring that in it's about halfway um, again we're probably going to select this gradient tool because we don't want that split so much over here and we're just going to tilt it slightly just so we get a nice sort of even so it follows that part of the mushroom okay yeah cool I'm happy with that we're just going to bring it out a little bit more and we're going to turn that down again to 40 Okay, so it's really really subtle but it makes a massive difference and now we're going to add the light we don't need to add the light onto the white because obviously white is the high sort of value um, of that of that sort of tone um, but obviously with the red we can go lighter so what we're going to do is select the red colour and we're going to bring it up to this sort of pink go with the diagonal line as well by the way and then we're going to um, select the top oh we haven't done the um, the shadow on that on the blobs will come to that in a sec. So we'll call this one top and we'll call this one um, top and we'll call this um, light. And then we're going to just add this one back in from the other side. Okay, maybe it's that light shadow, light shadow. It looks pretty cool. It's starting to come out now. Um, and we're going to just quickly do the same thing for the blobs at the top. So we're just going to call this one. Um, blob light and we're going to select the blobs oh wrong layer and we're just going to quickly bring up that colour and then we're going to make it lighter ok and then we're just going to get the gradient tool again um, and we're gonna literally just going to add it onto these ones over here ok so if we just hide this by pushing ctrl h we can see that that starts to lighten up and then we just need to add the shadow ok um, and so we don't need that pink anymore so we're going to get black and then we're just going to obviously you know remember to paint these down as well and obviously 40 percent i'm just going to call this blob shadow ok so now we have this kind of cool looking 3D-ish um, mushroom that's going to form the one sort of pillow of our house and basically I'm going to just go back to the uh, 
the Art Attack sort of style. Here's one I made earlier, and we're going to bring this into the architecture. Okay, and then I'm just going to scroll this down. It would help if I'd put these into that folder that I created. Okay, so in there over here, the assets are. So just going to bring these over. And again, we're just going to sort of bring this. So as you can see, I've probably even made the original one actually bigger, much bigger than this. Um, I wouldn't recommend actually making the layers bigger. Um, oh, we need to do this. Um, I wouldn't recommend stretching these out. I'd recommend um, redrawing them um, because obviously you you know you are stretching the pixels, and obviously you'll take a loss on the a bit of loss on the quality. Um, but obviously we need to now do the light layers for these so we're just going to quickly run through um, so again we've got the bottom new layer rename that get the gradient tool and we're going to follow that line again and we're just going to take this down to 40 okay obviously we're going to do this for the top as well there we go select that control again and um, we're going to add that shadow onto the back. Okay, and we're just going to get the blobs again and do the same on there. We can rename them both. Um, we're just going to take these two down slightly though in terms of their movement, select the movement tool, and we're just going to bring those down in line with that. And then we're going to call this one. Um, M to top shadow M to blob shadow oh and then M to bottom shadow okay and then we're gonna just take them down to forty percent as well Okay, so uh, we need to add the light in as well onto the top two parts. So just quickly call that top light. You can put M2 on there as well, um, but obviously because this is just a, a demonstration and not my master one, um, I'm just going to sort of leave it. Again, we've, we've got the yellow up from earlier, so we'll do these ones first. Gonna bring that in, and then we're gonna go to the to the top, and we're just gonna do what we did before. Just let this sort of pink colour out. There we go. That'll do. And then we'll just roll that in. Okay. Um, so we select select Control D. So now we have um, our two sort of mushrooms um, being brought up. Again, we c if we don't want to select the layer, we can with our select tool we can deselect or auto select, and that way if we've got something selected in the layers tab, um, it won't move um, that specific thing we touch. It will move the whole thing. So, um, in addition to that, I now want to sort of create a house. So, we need to connect these two together. Um, so I decided to sort of just draw on um, with the pen tool um, a rough sort of body. Okay, so just start anywhere inside. Um, I wanted to, last time I gave it sort of like this sort of arched roof just to show like time, maybe a bit of wear um, and obviously the organic sort of shape of the uh, object and then we sort of just want to want it to look as though it's coming out from underneath uh, these parts as well um, it doesn't matter whether these lines are perfect or not because they're going to be essentially hidden underneath these so uh, what we're going to do is uh, create a new layout and we're going to call put this one underneath both of these um, and it's putting it put the layer the folder in there so let's just bring it down again 
and we're going to call this one um, house body oh yeah the body of the house and we're going to go to our path tool and we're going to just do that again m1 house body okay and then we're going to create a selection click ok and then we're going to go back to our layers we're going to create a new one and we're just going to go edit fill this in with white okay so as you can see now um, over this side of the mushroom it per works perfectly fine um, because obviously this side was the lighter side so it blends in really easily however on this side we've added the shadow um, not so well so the first thing we're going to do is add um, a gradient in this side just to even this out slightly so we're going to create a new layer we're going to select the previous one and we are going to draw on this gradient just going down sort of down here take it back down to 40 so it lines up and then we should have a almost a smooth um, transition we have a bit of a halo in happening around here but we can work that out later so um, it's still looking a little slightly weird um, on my original one um, you know once we start getting these extra effects and things in you know these shadows become more subtle and redundant so um, we're just going to quickly call this one um, house body and we're going to call this up one um, go away oh, every time it draws you on the wall um, house and we're going to call this one shadow Okay, so um, first thing we're going to do is now start to add some details. So we're going to get a, a door on the front of the house. So we're going to call this one um, door. New layer. And we just want a guide layer. Um, so we're just going to paint on um, really just a round sort of um, door, the shape that we want. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be too precious, but it does have to work. Um, as a shape, um, obviously it doesn't matter if it's got, but if it's perfect, so it's just going to be a guide piece, okay? Um, and then we're just going to sort of erase back. I'm going to turn the hardness up as well. So we're just going to, again, we just want to get that sort of almost perfect, just so it, the door doesn't come too much off the house when we use it. So obviously you can go for any sort of shape, door, or anything that you. Um, feel like doing. I was just imagining these sort of old wooden rustic doors um, that you get. So with the pen tool um, I'm then going to uh, start to draw this down. So the bottom can remain flat without pulling any of the pegs out. It keeps a straight line. Um, basically where there's no curves. And then there we go. Okay. Um, we're going to hide this original layer. We're going to go to our paths. Create a new layer. In fact we can delete that original one, we're just going to call this door um, cut out and we're going to go with um, door from here I've called it four but obviously you're going to go back and re in fact I'll do that just for the oh it's like door and then we're going to go and make that selection again ok and click ok so this time what we're going to do is edit and we're going to fill this the same colour as the um, as the yellow bits, not the red, the yellow. So click OK, click OK, OK. Um, and then what we're going to do is um, go to. Um, we want to basically create um, like a frame going around the edge. So we're going to contract the selection inwards. Um, so we're going to go to select, modify, um, contract, and we're going to do this by we'll try five pixels. Okay, there we go, and it fits in quite nicely. Obviously, if you need to do others, then obviously rename them yourselves. Um, so, what we need to do is, um, in fact, we're going to fill this colour in, the yellow, and this one's going to be. Um, so edit, fill, and then this one. It's going to be oh, OK and then click OK and then our background is going to be red and we're going to do the foreground colour from where we select before so it's red 
going to look this kind of quirky looking door and then what we're going to do is um, select this layer the top layer and then we're going to erase this out okay so the reason for this is it allows us to create a bevel and emboss okay which mimics um, the shadow so we're just going to go door so that's the door frame and this is the door body and then what we're going to do is um, go to the effects tab and we're going to add a bevel and boss obviously that is looking pretty huge um, but it's on the wrong one so we're going to set door frame bevel and boss I think and um, in a bevel and we're turn the size down to around six pixels. I don't want it to be too dark because it'll look a little bit tacky. Um, so we're going to go one pixel. And we're going to soften that by about one or two. In fact, I think one pixel will do. And obviously, the light is coming from this angle. So we are going to bring that in. Okay. So cool, we're starting to get this really nice looking door. So I click OK. Um, it just still looks a bit icky. Um, and we're going to take that yellow right down. I think we're going to create more like an orange edit feel because that yellow is horrid. Okay, so it's. And we're on the wrong layer again. <laughs> Sorry about that. So just do it again. Just remember it from before. Can, then we can go Control D. Now, but the other thing that we want to do um, is start to add some detail on the door. Um, so some like wooden slats for the wood. Now we're not going to use the pen tool for that because it looks too straight, too manufactured, and we want it to look more organic. So we're going to go with this sort of handheld stroke um, which you get natural sort of flows in wood and we're going to angle it slightly so we're going to go out and in and then back out again and we'll create a little door handle okay um, and it does look a little bit so we're going to start with the middle and then we're just going to bring it out okay get a door handle in there um, then we're going to add the same effects on. So rather than repeat those effects, we can literally go copy layer style and we can go back, left click, and well, right click, and then we can go to paste layer style, which means it will copy it on. Um, so once we actually draw on a new layer, um, we're going to just go door and we're just going to go detail. And then we're just going to quickly draw those on. I'm just going to purposely be a little bit more deviating with the, um, the with those details. I'm just going to keep going until I find something that I like. Um, so you know, you don't always have to go with the first thing you do, and then we're going to paste that layer style again. Okay, and we have this sort of 3D effect. Now you'll notice it's happened on these, so we get our eraser, and then we can erase those up to where it joins on with the uh, main door okay so slowly starting to see this um, building come alive um, the next thing that we need to do is actually add um, some detail on because you know it's been this presumably has been at the forest floor for a long time um, and so we need it to have um, you know look a little bit worn a little bit dirty a little bit grimy um, so we're going to go and select our brush tool and we're going to get um, some of the brushes working with in the um, previous sessions. So again, the sort of dry pastel tool um, was quite nice. So again, I'm just drawing on things I shouldn't be drawing on. So we're good. this time we're going to add a door create a new layer. And um, we can hide the effects as well, just to make it a little bit more cleaner. Yeah, so we'll create a new layer and call this um, dirt texture or dust as I've called it everyone likes a bit of dust okay so <coughs> we've got our thing we're gonna go to our brush presets we're gonna turn off a t 
texture. I think maybe no, we actually want to have the texture on, um, but we're going to add the color. Okay, we do want that sort of quirky looking um, piece of information. So why would that draw? There we go. Yeah, and now obviously that's going to look pretty pretty nice. Okay, so we've got these on. We need to um, shape dynamics as well. No. Um, but we do want that to um, turn off the size gear. Okay, it's picking up some details from before, which is a little weird. Maybe it's if we turn that off, no. Um, there we go. So, what should happen now is each time we move, it should turn, which it's not doing. Okay. So angle just a there we go. Yeah, that's what we want. So basically what we're gonna do is build up um the dirt on this new layer, but what we need to do is select all of the uh not the door, I'm gonna move this out of there, sorry. We need to select the body for the um the two bodies of the mushrooms as well so what we need to do is select the first one and we can hide that folder we'll go into the second one now push control and shift this time and it will add those to our selection okay and um, don't need that group that's the one that we copied in before and obviously the house body let me just go that's the door <laughs> um, so there's the house body. Okay, so um, we can close these folders off and we can go back to this layer now, which is going to be like our dirt layer. We need to rename it as well because we can push Ctrl Z, it's taking it away. And we are literally just going to build up into this. Okay, we're going to, we are going to go sort of over the door, but we can bring that back as well. Okay, and, and obviously, with the color dynamics on there, you know, we start to copy the colors that are at the bottom. And it starts to look more um, as though they're from the same environment. That's the other thing um, that you know we tend to see a lot of missed a lot is um, that things that look as though they're from the same from the same place, um, which obviously um, isn't natural because they all do. Um, the ones on the top, towards the top, um, are probably going to be more faded than the ones at the bottom, as I did here. As you can see, this is a lot more richer here than it is at the top. Um, presumably because rain and things like that tend to clear away the dirt on tops of buildings um, but at the bottom um, where obviously it's got more contact it tends to uh, remain quite sort of uh, remain that sort of darkness so I was fairly happy with that what we're going to do is take um, the gradient tool and we are going to get a white going to create a new layer and this time we're just going to okay that isn't going to work so what we're going to do is take our erase no our eraser sorry our root at the select tool get the lasso tool out and we are literally just going to take these Parts. We're going to go Control X from there, which is cut, and go to our next layer and push Control V, Control Shift V, sorry, and that should paste it back in place. And then we're going to turn down the opacity on those. Okay, we're going to repaint this on another layer at the top. So what we're going to do is get the eraser tool, go and get the same sort of settings as what we had underneath. Go to the right layer, of course, and then we are just going to take these bits away. Actually, I think I think actually just erasing that slightly is getting the effect that we want. So we probably don't even need to do that now. Okay, so there we go. Um, a couple of ways of achieving that sort of same result. So um, obviously, um, we just need to rename these layers. I'm just going to call this um, the darker and the lighter above. It. Okay, 
and um, obviously we just need to reposition these in um, so make so once we've got the folder selected we can bring it down uh, there's a bit of an issue with the leaves so we may need to bring this foot above the trees um, I've just put it inside there which is what you want to do so there we go we can bring that in um, you know we can sort of I did originally have it tucked behind um, but we're just going to quickly paint on some leaves again um, remember if you saved um, your brush presets from the previous um, tutorial then you shouldn't have any problem getting them up we're just going to create a new layer again and obviously just check that works which it does Check, pick our colour again which we're just going to give it this red ok it's a little bit darker than before um, but a little bit more pink so we're just going to perhaps take it a little bit more into the red um, and we're just going to get this embedded in um, you can see where the layers this thing with the layers may start to make it a little bit more confusing um, so we're just going to paint this in slightly okay uh, just mix it up and then we're going to um, take these back under the tree layer um, yeah and I think that sits quite nicely except for the fact that that needs to be brought back out um, and I think originally I had um, mellowed in the pavement yeah so what we're going to do um, is we'll leave yeah we'll no I think that has to go okay so what I did was um, we want to make it look like it's been walked on like a pavement so currently these leaves um, are very spiky sticking out they don't look as though they've been walked on like this place has been lived in so what we're going to do is create our brush and we're literally just going to change the angle jet to a more flat state okay so when we go across it looks as though they've been trampled down okay um, obviously we're going to make them a lot smaller because they would presumably have sort of snapped in half okay um, you know even that's but that's a little bit too flat so we're going to keep it about 10 I think and yeah there we go and we're just going to take the size down to about 20 yeah there we go and we're just going to craft a sort of pathway okay um, and obviously we, we know we're going to make these slightly darker as well and um, just to show that this pathway has been worn in um, okay and we can just sort of bring that up um, and what we're going to do is just call this um, leaf path or path leaves leaves and we're going to select this layer so we've got a detail, we're going to create a new layer and with this we're going to just create, get a normal brush um, so and we're going to select a sort of a brown maybe an orangey brown something that's just going to darken that up um, we do want this to be soft so you know we're just going to select this colour and we're going to literally just you know give this a sort of opacity over the top okay and um, see what it looks like we may have to do it in black if the brown doesn't work too well yeah I think it's going to have to be in black so again just del quickly delete about that detail and let's take our colour picker and we'll just get black select that again there we may just need to take down a little bit more and obviously once we get our, the rest of our sort of buildings and stuff in um, you know that will look pretty cool so about 25 I think on there and yeah that's pretty cool okay so um, we start to we're starting to get our buildings built in okay um, so obviously I mean there's a massive difference between the atmosphere and mood of this um, with what we have here so what I did um, was basically we are inside this massive dense sort of forest and we need to replicate that we need to show that now um, for this image that where I'm at I'm sort of thinking about bringing in trees maybe in the background slightly here 
um, just to show the underside of those leaves okay to really add that depth in and we'll add some windows onto this building and actually get more buildings in here and actually decide on what sort of location this is so i was imagining it being like sort of like a domestic like village setting um, at the very start of the game um, but you know we'll, we'll kind of work that out over the next sort of couple of, couple of weeks or so um, but basically yeah we're at this bottom of this dense forest and basically what was happening was um, you know if that doesn't look as though we're at the bottom of a forest and doesn't look very moody or atmospheric um, so you know we need to sort of add that that in um, so we literally what we're going to do is colour in all the parts that are underneath um, this this sky all the light needs to be coming from this sky I think originally yeah, I repositioned my mushroom so I could sort of see that light source coming in okay um, so what we're going to do um, is and also actually I think we need to add a little bit of darkness to the top of these oh yeah 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 really important thing missing here we need to add this under the shadow underneath so um, I do apologize for missing that part out so um, on our mushroom towers we're going to go to the top well actually no the bottom sorry and we're going to add um, another shadow layer so M2 shadow 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 2 and then we're just going to select that we're going to go to our gradient tool and we're going to bring this part down okay and we're going to take it to 40 again yeah so it's much more much more realistic sorry with that shadow coming from underneath um, and we're going to do that again with um, the other one so again we'll stream one but um, shadow just make a new layer oh go away honestly it's going to be the um, death of me that so I'm just click M2 um, button shadow can't see in the dark again I should, I should have put the lamp on but I don't have a lamp so it'd be very difficult if I put M2 it should be M1 and then we're just going to select that bottom part again um, select the right layer get the gradient tool and there we go get that in take it that down to 40 control D so I'm going to add um, some more shadow onto the top of this as well. Okay, um, so we're going to go to the house body. Uh, that's the door. We don't need a door. Keep doing that. Um, and we're going to create a new layer. And then we're just going to bring this down. And actually, this needs to be above all of these towers. No, actually, it doesn't that's a lie so let's just keep it here for now we'll just bring this down and we're just going to bring that to 40 ok um, let's just have a look I'm not sure if I yeah I think it's ok and then we're just going to add um, a little bit of one at the bottom as well ok obviously it's really starting to see that coming out from this pole uh, this side um, so what we're going to do is just deselect that and we're going to add just another shadow from this side obviously um, so we're going to just quickly name that nice shadow obviously we can turn these off if we don't like them ok so we're just going to turn those on and we're just going to find mushroom 2 And then we're going to create a new layer again. Just call this M2 Shadow 3. And select that. And then we're just going to add this in. Um, control D. Oh, yeah. oh, control Z. I just want to bring it in, but I don't want it going up too far up. Because um, obviously it will impact everything else. Um, 4C. Control D, and again, you know, I mean, it doesn't balance very well with it. Um, so we're just going to take that down. Yeah, okay. I don't think it's going to work, so we'll just delete that and we'll delete the other one on the house. 
Uh, we are going to darken the whole of that area anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, okay, so we are going to now create this as though it's at the bottom of this forest where it's dark, where the only light, the real light source and visibility is in the atmosphere. Okay, so what we need to do is select everything um, other than these trees in the background, so this fence, um, these trees, this floor, um, these parts as well, and we're going to literally paint a layer over the top that is dark. Okay, um, obviously later on we'll have to do this for the, each individual um, components if we were to take them into a game. Obviously I haven't named these fence areas, so again, push control, select the image, push shift on the next layer to select those as well. Okay, and then we can um, just start to bring this through. Um, it's a little bit time, it's a, it is slightly time consuming. Um, there we go, got all that selected, cool. And we just want to select these parts as well. It's, it's been so such a pain today, there we go. Um, and then to the, the, the top, okay, it's still being a pain. And we just want to make sure we get them blobs. No, I don't want to select the layer, I want to select. I don't want it highlighted, I just need to select the actual image. So, which ones do we want? So, we've got the blobs, we just need the top. There we go. And now for the trees. Uh, if we just go for the bottom ones of the trees, obviously all your layers should be named. Um, not like mine here where I haven't named them for the tutorials, um, which is a bit bad practice. But obviously my final one, everything is named, everything is clear. Um, and then we need to add um, the leaves that are in between, so these ones. And obviously the ones on the ground. Okay, so now we should have everything obviously in that area selected and what we're going to do is as we're only focusing on this area for the tutorials rather than doing the full image we're just going to create the sort of biggest brush that we can okay blah 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 I know we need to make a lay that to keep warning me and then we're going to again just create a new layer here and we are just going to paint it all in black okay so obviously we've got a brush the quicker it will do this part in the process. So even though we're not focusing on these, I'm just going to paint all these in just to keep it consistent. Okay, and obviously once we've got it all done, we can start to bring that down. And actually create that sort of moody looking um, dark atmosphere that we have at the forest floor. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty cool. Um, so, um, yeah, so today's lesson, pen tool, um, really creates these nice sort of vector graphics. Um, but again, because Photoshop runs off um, pixel pixels rather than um, the geometrics, uh, you know, that quality is going to be defined by how um, the resolution of your image. Um, so if you're working in Illustrator, where it's mainly paths that you use, you you know, it doesn't matter how far you go in, you'll always have that smooth shape. So if we zoom in on these grill quite a lot, we end up seeing the squares and we can see where the path has been converted. In Illustrator, you'll have that straight line of the original path. Okay, so I um, can't wait to see your... Um, your versions. Um, remember we are having uh, the next session is going to be characters and um, yeah enjoy. Um, I've seen some good stuff so let's keep it up. Thank you.